Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Hope you are all doing well. Oh, I'm going to start off, I'm going to tell you a dramatic story. We've had quite the morning, me and Lina. But we went out for a walk this morning and uh, we were just about to leave the park and I turned around the next thing, Luna was nowhere to be seen. And I thought she was just a wee bit behind me, so I always wait because I've told just before in the channel, you know, that she panics if I get too far out of sight, you know. So I'm waiting for five minutes, no sign of her, and I thought that's strange. So I started to call her, started to whistle, nothing. And I thought, God, that's really weird. So I started to head back down, she was nowhere to be seen anywhere. And I thought, oh my God, what's happened? And then I knew, oh God, she's lost sight of me and she's panicked and she's ran. So I'm looking around, calling and calling, trying to find her. And I was a bit worried because she doesn't know this park very well. And I knew that she would get disorientated and she'd be panicking. And she might end up injuring herself, trying to find me. So I'm just calling and calling and calling trying to keep calm, trying to keep my thoughts, you know, in check, that they don't run away with me. And I thought, right, okay, calm down, just keep looking for her, we're going to stay here until we find her. Now, I wasn't sure whether to go left or right, because I was worried that if I went, if she went right, she was going to go head right into the National Park. And that goes on for miles, and if she went in there, God, I might never find her. So I was praying that she'd gone left. So I thought, right, I'll go left, because that's the direction we were heading, and see if she just panicked and ran on up through the bushes or something, and just lost sight of me. So I headed up. Everyone I was meeting, I was asking them, have you seen a big black dog, you know? They must have thought I was crazy. And everybody was like, no, I haven't seen so carried on walking and walking after about 10 minutes I'm shouting and shouting and I knew I was eventually going to come to the end where you come out of the park but there was a field up the top and I thought right I'll walk to the end and then I'll go up into the field to see if she's went up into the field because at least then I'd be able to and it's so overgrown down there you know it's very natural there's a lot of bush, there's a lot of undergrowth and she'd gone in through there. You know, it would be very hard for her to find her way back to me. So I just kept calling and calling and hope, hoping that she would hear my voice and that she would eventually be able to make her way back to me at the sound of my voice. So I'm walking on up, praying that she's up in this direction and I don't have to turn back and go all the way into the National Park because God knows if I'd have been able to find her. So I'm walking along, praying to my ancestors to help me, to guide me, to find her. I had a sort of an intuition I was going in the right way. So I'm shouting and shouting and shouting on her, top of my voice. And then the next thing I see this guy coming along the path with two dogs. And one of them was Luna. I've never been so relieved in all my life to see him coming along. He had his dog and he had her. And there she's coming along and he said that he saw her up in the top field panicking running around he knew that she'd got separated from her owner and he, was, he said it took him a wee while to catch her because she was panicking but he could hear me shout Luna Luna at the top of my voice so once he heard the name he started to call her and she came to him and he leaded her up and he started to come in the direction of me shouting and we found each other and I was so thankful to him. You know, he definitely was an angel. So she was a bit lame, she was a bit sore because she must have been running through, the, he said she was running through the bushes first so she might have just got caught in there but she had no cuts on her, thank God. And uh, she wasn't the worst for wear, just the two of us had gotten a bit of a fright. And all ended well, thankfully and uh, we got home and you know we didn't get home I think we must have been out for about three hours between walking and then all the drama that unfolded it just just was to show you your life can change in an instant turn around and all of a sudden 
things have completely changed. <coughs> Excuse me. But we got home and she had a good sleep. She slept it off and she's still a little bit sore, but it's nothing serious. Just take a couple of days, she can walk it off. It's probably just a little sprain she's got on the ankle there, in her foot. And um, all ended well, thank God. So that's a bit of a dramatic uh, story for you that I, that me and her dealt with this morning. And it, the, the, the subject I'm going to talk about now is came to mind because of that experience. And we'll tie it all in. You'll see at the end of it how it makes sense. But it brought a subject to me about dreams, bad dreams, which leading into nightmares. And I'm going to talk a wee bit about that now. So, if you um, are experiencing bad dreams or, or nightmares, it could be due to stress, but it also could be due to an unresolved issue from your past that maybe you thought you'd resolved, but hadn't quite fully. Now our body and our minds are very, very intelligent and they do a lot of things that we're not aware of. And they're always trying to keep us safe, always trying to protect us. And this is a way for your body and mind, it's a natural way. It's like an alert system that they send out if you are in unhealthy, stressful situations or you have unresolved issues from your past that maybe you haven't healed or haven't dealt with. And you know, dreams can be very unsettling. I've experienced them myself. And in some cases, you know, they can be very frightening and they can even be so bad that they make you afraid to go to sleep. I've had experiences in the past where I've had such a bad dream, I've had to sleep with the light on. So it's, it's, it's not, um, it's not any joke, you know, it uh, can be a very distressing thing. And they can be so intense and so real, feel so real, incredibly scary to experience. And um, they can occur occasionally, or you can have what's known as reoccurring dreams, where they might re reoccur every night, once a week, once a month few times a year but it'll be the same dream that you're having over and over um, and sometimes what you've got to remember is the image in the dream can relate to the experience you have you know it could be the same person that's in the dream or it might have nothing to do with it but there's some sort of figure or symbol in there that is um, related to that experience so it might be sort of like a symbolic association and it can be quite hard to figure out if it's like that try to figure out the meaning of it if it's not very direct you know and things like associations could be you're running in the dream you're running from someone you're scared you're locked in somewhere you can't get out you know we've all had the sort of naked dreams of vulnerable dreams um feelings being lost can't find your way home um, or you feel like someone's chasing you trying to get you it's all sort of things that um, we experience when we're having bad dreams and nightmares so dreaming is a process it's a processing of emotions and um, if you're experiencing something stressful in your life um, could be to do with anything, a person, or it could be something stressful that happened to you in your past and you thought maybe you'd resolved it, but maybe you've still got a fear surrounding it or associated with it. Or it could be something that you're facing in your day-to-day -day life that's stressing you out and um, you've been maybe pushing it away or burying it, trying not to deal with it. And what tends to happen when you do that is it comes out in the dream, the dreamscape. Um, so, 
what you've got to remember though is even though the dreams are scary and um, they can really jolt us sometimes out of sleep and they're so real and so vivid that it can be quite a frightening experience you've got to remember that it's actually your body and your mind trying to alert you it's trying to tell you there's something wrong it's trying to if other things have failed it's trying to really point out to you there's something not working there's something not right in your daily life it's harmful to you or something you've experienced in the past is still harming you and you need to deal with it or trying to tell you to heal or to resolve it because it's not good for you so what you need to start doing is what you can do is you can start a dream journal and you can start logging down the dream and if it's too scary at that time you can go back to it and re read it and try to understand walk yourself through the dream and what's happening in the dream and if it if it's that scary where you feel you know you're afraid to go to bed or you're afraid to sleep you know the light on things like that then what to do is once you start the dream journal before you go to sleep you say okay i don't understand what the dream means but I'm trying to process it, I'm trying to resolve it. And sometimes even doing that alone can lessen the dream because then your body and your mind knows that you're starting to take action. So it might get less the dream or it might be as severe because you're trying to process it. And then start to look at things in your life that are causing you stress, anxiety, or things in your past that maybe are something that happened to you in your past that's kind of similar maybe to what's happening in the dream and see if there's any correlations. It's something that you need to start to resolve or it could be something that you've even, you know, tried to heal, that you need to heal from. And then when you go to bed at night, if you say, say to yourself before you go to sleep, I'm trying to fix it, I'm trying to resolve it, I'm trying to work it out. And then your mind will start to try and help you to figure it out. Um, but a great way of doing that is journaling. Journal the dream, draw the dream, paint the dream, whatever you want to do. And try to really sort of look at it. And when you go into bed, try and stay calm and try to say to yourself, okay, I'm trying to work through it. I'm trying to process the emotion. And even that can help to lessen the dream. It can help your brain and your body to come out of that alert system, what we call the fight or flight response which my channel is named after, you know, that we go into when we're either trying to run away from something or we're afraid of something. We either fight it or we flee from it. So when you're in these nightmares, your body's going into that fight flight response, depending on what's happening in the dream. So you'll want to try and get the body to come out of that. And you can also say things before you go to bed, like, I'm safe. Even though I feel scared, I've got through these dreams in the past and I'm trying to work through them. And that can help you to start to resolve bad dreams and nightmares. So I hope that helps. And I'm going to tell you a wee story that relates to this. And it relates to what happened to me this morning with Luna as well. So years ago, I had a dog. When I was about 18, I had a dog called Wolfgang. He was a bit of a mongrel. He was a mix of everything. I loved that dog. And when he was about a year, or maybe just over a year, he disappeared one day from the house. He disappeared from the back garden. 
and I was heartbroken. I don't know what happened to him. I don't know where he went. And we searched for weeks in the area and all the outer areas. We put up posters, everything, looking for this dog. And to this day, I never knew what happened to the dog. I never found him. And even though I made my peace with it, I was heartbroken, absolutely heartbroken. Come here, baby. So I was just getting distracted there by somebody. Somebody was in the hedges. I just don't want Luna interacting when she's got that sore paw. Come here, darling. Good girl. There we go. Well, she's got that sore paw just in case she injures her again. But I think it's okay now. But anyway, on with the story. My, um, I was heartbroken after losing that dog. And I think one of the things that was so difficult about it is that it was never resolved. I never found him. You know, even if it had come to a heartbreaking thing where he had died and he'd got injured, even if I'd have found him, it would have got resolved. But even though, oh well, Luna, don't knock the camera over, baby. Even though um, I thought I had resolved it, I hadn't. Because after I got Luna, about a year after I got her, which was around the same time that he disappeared, I started having this bad dream, this recurring nightmare. Now, Luna was in the dream, so it was very symbolically referenced to her. I knew it was about her. I started having this bad dream that I was running through a town and I could see Luna up ahead of me and I was calling her and calling her and calling her. And every time I'd get to where I saw her, I would go around the corner and she'd be gone. And this went on throughout the whole dream. And I was very frightened in the dream. I kept feeling like I was going to lose her and that I was never going to be able to find her. And I used to wake up in a sweat and it was so real. I used to think she was gone and I would sit up in the bed and I would look down to see if she was in her basket and she was and as soon as I would see her I would touch her and I'd say thank God and I would lie down but that's how vivid the dream was. Now at the time I couldn't understand why I kept having this dream over and over because she was safe. You know there was no issues with her that I was going to lose her until I started to journal it. I started to journal it and started to ask myself, why am I having this dream? And that, this dream actually got quite bad that I used to sleep with the light on because it used to scare me so much. But once I started to journal it, I started to figure out and I used to start to say to myself, okay, I'm safe, Luna's safe. Nothing's going to harm her and it's going to be okay. Nothing's going to happen to her. And that made it easier. I wasn't worried about going to sleep and having this dream because it was so real and so scary that when I would wake up, I would think that she was gone, that something had happened to her. But as I started to journal it, over time, it took time and I started to paint it and draw it. I realized it was a fear I had of losing Luna. Even though I wasn't conscious of it, it stemmed from me losing Wolfgang and what happened to him. And it was in my subconscious, the fear. And it just sort of came to me as like a aha, aha moment through the journaling process that it was a subconscious fear. So even though I had let it go and I understood, there was still a fear lingering around it and it didn't become manifest until I got Luna. And around that same age, 
that he was when he disappeared is when I started to have the dream. And I probably had the dream for a good six months or so before I started to work on it and realize, you know, and try to figure out what was going on. And then it probably maybe took me about another three months, but we're all different. It just depends on what's going on for you. But as soon as I got that aha, aha moment and I realized that I had to let go of the fear that was associated with losing Wolfgang. And as soon as I did that and put that to rest, I never had the nightmare again. And as soon as I realized I was safe, Luna was safe, nothing was gonna happen, you know, that I was gonna be able to take very good care of her. The dream just disappeared, the nightmare stopped. And that was it. So it's funny because it's funny how our body and our minds are trying to protect us. Sometimes when we have these dreams, we think that our bodies and our minds are trying to hurt us, but they're not. They're actually trying to help us. They're trying to help us process difficult emotions that maybe we've buried and we haven't even realized, or stresses that we're dealing with in our everyday life that we haven't processed and we need to process them. So funnily enough, Luna did disappear today and I was running trying to find her. But uh, it was a different scenario and I did find her. But that dream came to mind when I was walking back home with Luna about what happened to Wolfgang in the past. So the dream just didn't help me resolve a nightmare. It also helped me resolve an old hurt, an old pain and an old fear. And it's when you think about it, our bodies and our minds are so intelligent. They're running away there behind the scenes. We're not even paying attention and they're protecting us the whole time. Sometimes those protections don't come out in the way that we might want them to but they have to shock you, to wake you up to something that's damaging you, something that's harming you. And when you take it, when you pay attention and listen, your body will also find you the solution that you're looking for. So from me and my lovely Luna, after a very exciting day, take care and I'll see you on the next one.